Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about this barrel here. Barrel is by Roscoe Manufacturing and it's a partnership with Sage Dynamics. This is their K9 12.5 patrol barrel. So, why is it not in the rifle anymore or in the pistol? Funny you should ask. As I said in the previous video, or you'll you'll find out in the uh, <coughs> the accuracy portion, which will come after this. These screws were a little bit loose. Um, if you watch the first video, you'll know. Well, not the first, but the overview of the build. You'll know that I built this with my son. Apparently, I didn't double check like I should have. And this was a little bit loose. So when I shot the first accuracy test, there was some play in this. And it was causing contact with the set screws. Particularly the front set screw for the gas block. And I'll roll in pictures now showing you where it was making contact. After further inspection and I torqued everything up, it still makes contact. So, I decided to pull this off so that I can inspect it further and file it down because I always replace these screws. So, I, I'm going to file them down. These particular screws, they're inset pretty far for the Allen, so I'm not too worried about that being an issue. And then once it's done, I'll, I'll blue it and it should be fine. Also... Since I had it apart, I was going to double check this, but then I remembered this, meaning the, ga the uh, barrel nut, I remembered that it wasn't a tight fit whatsoever. It was very pretty loose going in. So what I'm going to do is I am going to true up the mating surface on the upper receiver, and then I'm going to bed it with Loctite 680. Um, I don't know the shear strength offhand, I'll annotate it, but this stuff kicks ass, 180 degrees Celsius, which is like 360 something degrees Fahrenheit, works very well, um, and it's been used by multiple people, I've used it on other barrels with quite a bit of success, so I'm going to go that route, see if this changes anything with the accuracy for part two of that, which I'm planning to go first thing in the morning, ironically, December and it's going to be almost 60 degrees so I'm taking advantage of it so let's talk about the specs real quick 12.5 length so 12.5 inches in length chambered at 5.56 it utilizes a patrol length gas system proprietary to Roscoe manufacturing the, uh, the patrol length gas system is right in between mid-length and carbine. So with that, you get a softer recoil impulse, having it further out than, than carbine, but then you also have added reliability and function because it's lower, it's uh, further in than a mid-length, which allows for a longer dwell time better overall function um, and reliability in terms of its operation. Uh, moving on, it is made of 416R stainless steel. 416R stainless steel is a very good metal when it comes to accuracy. However, you're going to lose longevity out of the, out of the barrel. So um, I don't know what the difference is between a 4150 CMV barrel and a 416R barrel. A lot of it's going to depend on your rate of fire, how much you shoot on iron yards. But this does aid in accuracy and it's why it's used in a lot of barrels that are meant to be accurate barrels. The upside to this is that, as you can tell, it is nitrided. I don't know whether it's salt bath or gas nitriding but nitriding is a surface hardening process that adds 
longevity to whatever it is that you're you're going to be nitriding in this case the barrel you're going to have longevity so you know say a, a, a normal 416R stainless steel barrel for two for two two three or five five six will get say eight thousand rounds. Maybe you'll get twelve thousand or thirteen thousand or fifteen thousand rounds. No way to know. This is all assumptions, but I do know that nitriding does aid in longevity. It's why it's used predominantly now over chrome lining because it's a surface hardening process and not in addition to the surface to the surface like chrome is. It's also cheaper to do than chrome, and it's a lot. It's an even um, application as opposed to chrome, which you can have highs and lows if it's not done properly. Moving on, the gas block journal is 0 0.750, so standard, and it does come dimpled uh, right below the gas port itself or in the bottom. It is dimpled with one dimple. Uh, very important. You have to dimple set screws uh, any gas block that has a set screw it will not hold if you don't have uh, dimples you can buy a jig it, they're fairly cheap and they work well however it's nothing to the manufacturer to take you know an extra five ten seconds to throw it on the uh, on the drill press and dimple it real quick so I'm glad that's in there it's a one to seven twist half by uh, 28 thread and it has an 11 degree crown so <clears throat> now you know why it's out of the out of here and why I took the opportunity to go over this barrel but what I'm gonna do is one better and we're gonna take a look inside the barrel and uh, see what it looks like now it's not brand new I've got about 220 rounds down the pipe on this thing but I did run some brake clean and a bore snake down the bore to try to clean it up as much as possible so that you get a good representation of what it looks like without all the filth. So stand by, let me grab my cam, my uh, bore cam. All right, so here we go. So I got a hook to my phone. I am going to record this so I can overlay it on to the video. So going in from the chamber side, we're going to come in here and you're going to see the lugs immediately. Lugs are very nice. No burring or anything like that, which is what I experienced with the Triarch barrel, the first one anyway. The feed ramps, very nice. No issues there moving on in there's obviously copper there because it's been fired here's the chamber and then free bore and the lands and grooves so I don't know what this is what the rifling is I'll annotate it in the video if I can find out what it is but these are the lands and grooves so very nice it looks like they do some type of polishing to it I'm not entirely sure but it does look like it was polished a bit. <clears throat> um, I do have video footage when it was new, so I'll see if I could just add that in, maybe towards the end of the video, if I still have that video footage, and then you can see what it was like new compared to now at approximately 220 rounds. So, pretty uniform all the way down the bore. Here is the crown. A little gunk for me shooting it. But the crown is nice and clean. Jeez, jacking this all up. All right, let's go out and then line this up so we can take a look at the gas port, which I measured out to be 0 0.076. All right, here we go. So here is the gas port. As you can see, it's very clean all the way down into the gas block. Obviously, you see a little bit of wear there, but that's to be expected. Um, that's nothing to be alarmed with and there you go so here's the plan plan is I'm gonna true up the face of the upper receiver I'm going to bed the extension into the receiver torque it properly and then I am gonna 
file these down so that they stop making contact with the bottom of the uh, the handguard. And I'll roll in the pictures if I didn't already. I'll roll in the pictures showing you where it was making contact. So uh, it doesn't have to be a lot of contact, just enough to throw off the harmonics of the barrel and you get er erratic uh, dispersion, flyers. Sometimes it's all over the place. Um, and that's, I was kind of experiencing that, which you'll see after this video, that'll be the next one posted, part one of the accuracy test that's with the loose handguard and it making contact with the, the screw. So um, stick around for the next video and I will see you there. Thanks.